Welcome to the ADB Project. You're with your host, Steve and Jeff. G'day, Steve-O. How are you? Good, mate. Good. Today we're talking about growth hormone. Look at those rippling biceps. Put those guns away. Have you got a license for those guns, sir? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, um, if I had more growth hormone, I'd have more muscles, though. That's well, a little hint of what it does. This is really interesting. I yeah. mean, and again, I think whether you're here because you're interested in growth hormone for muscle growth, for yeah. fat loss, for yep. anti-aging purposes. Yep. Uh, mate, there is a ton of literature and information to get through. So much. Where it comes from, how you increase it naturally, what yeah. happens if you get it exogenously. Yep. Um, you know, how you can encourage more through exercise, mm-hmm. nutrition, mm-hmm. supplementation, herbs, compounds, amino acids, sleep. I mean, Steve, there's oh, so much to cover. Look at it. It's everywhere. It's like a slips cord in the round me. There's an Aussie term. Well, talking about, that- Aussie, <laughs> talking about Aussie terms, I like that. Slips cord. And so people go, what's this? Is that, is that, is that, is that like a slippers uh, f- female? Well, not females. Anyone who wears a dress. That's right. Not that including be, the Scottish. Yep. You have a slip, which is their petticoat, isn't it? Isn't yeah, it, it isn't is. That's right. It it's an yeah. undergarment. Yeah. Does your petticoat show at the end of your- Mine does. Do people still, do you still wear petticoats, Steve? And only just Saturday nights. All oh, right. Okay. But, yeah. but is petticoats still a thing? Do, do people still wear petticoats? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Maybe Amish or, do can they, we say that? I don't know. I don't um, know. I don't know what- yeah. I mean, no, the Amish have a special dress Armenian code. Armenian Amish. Oh. Is that what I mean. No, the oh, you uh, mean, Amish. I mean. Yeah. Um, but I think, but petticoats. Do people still wear petticoats? Can they you still do. buy petticoats? Buy like really? Oh, really? <laughs> Shows you how little how I know about I? petticoats. How much? $12. Oh, I get mine for ten. That's right. <laughs> but, but so a petticoat is designed to stop your skirt from chafing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Don't throw up while I'm drinking. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Almost <laughs> yippied everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's interesting. I don't even know what a petticoat's for. I just um, know that they're real thing. Anyway, doesn't it make your skirts wear or dresses wear better so they don't? Right up or something. Wow. Is that what it says? Oh, yes. See, I'm in touch with my feminine side of you. Yeah, but, yeah, she's downstairs and she doesn't let me do that that often. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to say, in terms of um, petticoats, there you go. You learn something yeah. new every day. So, steve well, while we're talking about slips, Gordon, yeah. which is, you know, this is how, oh, well, man, we really wander sometimes, don't we? I know, we? you do. Um, you know, in cricket, you have a slips, cordon, which yes. is designed to, once you get a nick off the yep. bat, to catch yep. it. So our American friends probably wouldn't get that. No. Nah. You've just got a catcher. We call him a wicket keeper. Yep. But alongside those people designed if a good bowl yeah. hits the edge of the bat, deceives the batsman, yep. it's good but not quite good enough. Yeah. And then you nicks get it, it. Nicks it. And, it. and it very commonly goes off the edge of a bat. Yeah. In baseball, if you're in America, that it goes off the edge of a bat. They call it a foul ball. Yeah. For us, it's still in play because yeah. we've got an oval that's all around the batsman. Yeah. Excuse me, everybody. I have a very important announcement. <laughs> News, Justin. Right. Have a seriously, guys. Um, I'm a bit of a technophobe, Steve. Yeah, I know. So I got to say that, right? I mean, like tags. we just we just sit here and like we just yabber on. I mean, you know, thank God for for Matt and, and Lauren. And look, for those of the that don't know, we've got a really awesome team yep. that sit behind us that actually help us with all of our technological things right yeah. and i mean like editing the pod the podcasts and yeah. doing up the socials Being and the reels and all Insta the rest of it and, and, and they've gone you guys are useless no no they've <laughs> gone, <laughs> you, you guys which we are we're like babes in the woods and we just oh, sit there and wait for our bottle to yeah. be shoved in our mouth. but guys there's, there's something that you could do that could actually really help us a lot and, and it's something that we're, we're we're keen to do is to get the news out there to talk to people to help as many people as possible yeah. and we need your help to be able to do that so um uh what we'd like to do is um, a shout out for Instagram stories um, that we can repurpose the stories on our Instagram account and generate a buzz around the the, the topics and the, the podcast. So mm-hmm. what we would love to hear from you guys is your favorite podcast episode and topics so that we can share them um, uh, uh, with us on Instagram and tag ATP science so that we can share them with everyone each week. If, if you can help us with just a bit of love, um, you know, sharing us on Insta, um, you know, and, and sort of tagging us in those sorts yeah. of things. Um, Steve and I are nearly that useless. Um, yes. but if you could definitely help us by sharing the love by, by, you know, sharing those hashtags, sharing us on Insta, um, any of that sort of stuff, um, as well as obviously, um, liking and subscribing and turning on notifications. I'm glad you did this bit. Cause I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I'm like a parrot. I've learned my rope. It's like, what is an Instagram? No, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, that, that would be, that would be really, really great. So again, guys, thank you for support. And, um, yeah. 
really, really, that's great. That's there you right. go. Yeah. Growth hormone. No, it's, it's what, like when, where, how, how do I increase it? Yep. What is it? What is it good for? Yep. So, Steve, how many amino acids is an, is growth hormone? Well, it's in 191 amino acids. Yep. Because that's its um that's its that's its protein length. Yep. Um, it's in one of these papers that I go. <laughs> and, 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 and what is it good for? How, how does that happen? I mean, obviously, let's start with naturally. Yeah. You produce growth hormone. Yep. It sounds like it helps you to grow. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it doesn't. Well, it does. Going back to the 18th century, they isolated this stuff that comes out of the pituitary gland. And it was found that that people that had, you know, that were dwarfs, they called them dwarfs back then, um, had, um, you know, low levels of this stuff called growth hormones. They didn't yep. know what it was. So they just called it growth hormone. Yep. Hormone that makes grow. Now, it does all sorts of other things, which is uh, goes on, you know, as, as long as the, your arm. But there's some incredibly benefits with it. But if you have too much of it, it's really bad. Well, you see people that have a um, a tumor on their pituitary gland. Yep. Um, was it Walden? I forget his name. The tallest man that ever lived, oh, yeah. I think, was eight foot eleven. Yeah, uh, he, he was very young when he died. Yeah, uh, he, he had a tumor. I think a lot of the the tallest people in the world typically have tumors on yep. their pituitary gland, they and they normally die at quite early age, and they're never particularly healthy because <sighs> that they sort of become gangly. Their knees mm. are stuffed. I mean, they mm. wear weird shoes. I mean, like stuff happens. To these people because they don't grow as they're intended to grow for the Correct. most part. I think even Walden had a walking stick at the yeah, age of 21. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's not good. But too much of a good thing, Steve. Yeah. So, But in terms of growth hormone, what is it designed to do naturally? So you're a baby, you're producing growth hormone. Yeah. Uh, what is it doing for you, Steve? It's, it's making you grow to a point where you you can elongate your bones, and 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 that continues to happen because we still produce growth hormone we after we finish growing because our growth plates close. They do the so they, plates, so, they, yeah. so they know so growth hormone is still produced in the body, but it yeah. no longer is making you grow. No, not in that way. So. So what does it do? It, it actually forms with insulin to make you grow in a more muscular sense. Right. And you might be thinking to yourself, if you just if you just cut the podcast now, yeah, and you go right here, I'm going to go and inject myself with this stuff. Uh -huh. Don't do it. What about cancer? Yeah. Well, I was going to say, there's lots of things, right? I mean, and again, this is where um, exogenous growth hormone can be beneficial. Yep. Um, but you've got to be careful about some of the side effects. But let, much, let's, yeah. before we get into that, All right, Steve, let's, let's that. continue talking about the good stuff about good growth stuff, hormone. Sure. So as you age, the yep. amount of growth hormone that you have decreases. Correct. Now, I said, I think in another podcast, that it halves every 10 years, but that's wrong. But Steve, yeah. what happens? All right. It does diminish as you age. Okay. Uh, you're, 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 so, so you're so, producing the most amount of growth hormone when you're a baby? Very much so. Yeah. Now, if you don't, you'll end up as a dwarf. Right. You'll end up very short stature. Yep. Now, they give that. Um, a hormone replacement in children, it's very safe yes. and that's actually a good thing because they're deficient in it. Yes. And they're just replacing the hormone back to healthy levels. And we'll, and that, that's the important lesson of today, healthy levels. And, and if I'm correct as well too, I think they actually worked out that Messi was going to be very short. Now, he wasn't a dwarf, but I think he was very diminutive in size and right. I think he actually needed intervention. I think it was around growth hormone. Don't oh, okay. quote me on that. Okay. But, I mean, so it's 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 actually more common than I think a lot of yeah. people, and when I say common, it's 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 rare, but it's, it's, it's more prevalent, I think think than most people would think. Correct. And and because it's 191 amino acids, you can't take it orally because amino acid chains break are down through the gut. Yeah, break right? down. Yeah. So so they have to inject it. So this is a, a little bit of a tricky one where where growth hormone, if you take it orally, it won't work. Yeah, it has to be injected. It has to be injected. So if you wanted to increase your growth hormone, um, there, there's ways to do it naturally. We'll get to that. Yeah. But to inject it, you, you have to get their stuff and it's very expensive and prescriptions and all sorts of things. So it's very, very tricky to get. So let me give a quick overview in terms of growth hormone because yep. there's good, bad and ugly. There is. So when you're a baby and when you're young, yep. you need lots of growth hormone. Yep. It does diminish as you grow. Yep. <clears throat> so once you get – now, Steve, can you tell us, do you have a, 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 an understanding of, not, of not, what not happens to it? Yeah, there is. There's some graphs here which we can put on the screen later which shows you the diminishment of your growth hormone as you age. Now, growth hormone is released when you sleep. Now, I'll show you this graph and then you can sort of um, – you know, we'll put it up on the screen, but you can see there, that's that big peak there. Yep. That's when, um, and hopefully this is going on the screen as well. Yeah. You can see that big peak there mm -hmm. is when growth hormone, and that, that dark period is when you sleep. So as soon as you fall asleep, you get a massive surge of growth hormone. Is it true, and I mean, again, we've seen this before as well too with twins, 
and they used to do it with smoking. One that yeah. smoked, one yeah. that didn't. And the one that smoked was stunted, not as yep. muscular and not as big. My son, who's yeah now six foot four, it's crazy, oh, right? He's geez. he's going to be he's going to be six foot five, I reckon, probably early in the new year. Not yeah. even before he's fifteen, he'll be six five. He's massive. He sleeps. He sleeps. Yeah. Now, obviously, everybody has a genetic potential. No, yeah. I mean, if you're really tiny mm. and you're just very small, not that you've got a problem with growth hormone, you, you, you've got genetic, if you like, blueprint. Yeah. You know, your DNA. Yeah. But if you're getting optimum levels of sleep as opposed to suboptimum, could that have an impact on your, on your height oh, and on your muscularity absolutely. and on your leanness? Yes, absolutely. Right. Now, growth hormone is good for all those things yes. to a point, but yeah. it's very good for those things. So if you are sleeping very well, you will grow more. So when so parents out there that are listening to this, if your kids want to play basketball, which mine does, yeah. and I say them all the time, like yeah. it'll be my little fella goes to bed at, at we get him ready for bed at seven yeah. and he's eight and he's in bed by seven thirty. Wow. Um, Clayton typically goes to bed at the same time, but he reads for about half an hour to an hour. Yeah. But he's lights out at eight thirty. Yeah. And like the, the holidays at the moment, Tony and I left at seven this morning. He was still asleep. Like, we were working from home yesterday. Yeah. He was still asleep at nine o'clock in the morning. Wow. So he's sleeping about sort of if left to his own devices right. about. 12, 12 hours. hours a day. That's incredible. <laughs> but so, okay. So let's say you finished growing. So if you want to grow to you and you, you want your children to grow to the optimum sure. height, they should be getting, you know, good amounts of sleep. Is there a perfect amount of sleep for children? No, it varies. It varies from child to child. And it depends on how the child is going. Like if your child needs, you know, one of them needs, sleep. needs, I'll say 12 hours. If, he doesn't yeah. stop growing, by the way. Yeah. Like, you know how some kids grow in spits and stuff. So anyway, so what they naturally need to feel refreshed. So it yep. might be it might be nine hours, it might yep. be 10 hours. Yep. It's Some certainly might. more than adults. Yes. Now, the other gland in our head called the pineal gland, not mm. the pituitary, which mentioned, but don't get them confused. The pineal gland is is the one that secretes melatonin that helps us sleep. Yep. And that as, as you're older, that atrophies too. So your, your, your sleep and growth hormone levels diminish as you age. Okay, so the way to naturally encourage the most amount of growth hormone, because once you finish growing, yeah. okay, you go, ah, oh, growth hormone, I don't care about that. No, mm. if you want beautiful skin, yep. you want nice hair, mm. you want good muscle tone. Yep, like me. And you want to stay leaner, mm. growth hormone is incredibly important. So quality sleep yeah. is going to significantly enhance the production of growth hormone. Steve, growth hormone and sleep, tell me when it occurs, sure. how it occurs. Um, you know, and I know that we've spoken about sleep and, and sleep patterns before sure. we are saying on the average and everybody's different yeah. sort of eight hours is kind of what people should be getting. Yeah. Now, some people can function and do incredibly well on six and it doesn't seem to disrupt them. Yeah. Some people like my wife, Tony, and I've said this before as well too, she honestly needs at least nine hours of, of, of sleep at least like oftentimes she'll go for 10 hours of, of sleep. Wow. Yeah. That's, 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 that's good. Yeah. That, that's good. Um, and, and, and as long as you wake up feeling refreshed and all that sort yeah. of thing. So, so you release growth hormone primarily when you sleep. Now, it does occur a little bit during the day, mm-hmm. but plasma levels go up here, and there's a graph here I'm just reading from the Journal of Pediatrics, that it occurs right after, about half an hour after you sleep, it goes to 10 micrograms per litre. Is, is that the maximum? That's the maximum. So, so you're producing the most amount of growth hormone yeah. when you fall asleep. Correct. So does that then mean that a little cat nap... If you can yeah. get, like in the afternoon, can help with growth hormone production? It can, but it's better to get, as long as it doesn't interrupt your deep, high quality sleep at night. So, so you know how people have a nap in the afternoon and they have trouble sleeping at night? Almost like it, yeah. You can still sleep, but it's almost like having a cup of coffee. Like it, you just don't get to that low, lower level, right? And you want that deep sleep. It's the deep sleep there. So, so when you're first going to sleep, it's like falling off a cliff. Yes. It's that deep recesses of sleep. That's when your body's producing the most amount of growth Absolutely. hormone. Absolutely. It's half an hour so, after you sleep. So therefore, if you're really, really tired and you go and you get six hours of sleep yeah. and you have that really deep sleep, yeah. but you're not getting enough, you're still getting growth hormone. You are. I mean, I, and I'll, I'll put this graph up again on the screen, but you'll see that after about halfway through the night, growth hormone levels drop to very, very low. You see that where my finger yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, it is. You see, it goes really high. So that's kind of busted off. my theory a little bit that the more sleep you get, the more growth hormone you produce. The deeper sleep you get, the more growth hormone. Right. In the, in the morning, you and you look at the, if you remember the, the podcast we've done on sleep. It's like a set of stairs, right? Yeah. Like it sort of comes 
and then it goes up that way. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, the, you get you get more more lighter sleep towards the morning. Yeah, which is funny because I and I think I said this to you. I always feel like I'm getting my yeah. best quality sleep, like just as the freaking alarm goes off in the morning. So oh, I was just dead to the world. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, and, and that can happen if you if you don't sleep well. But on a healthy sleeping night, you f- should fall asleep and fall asleep deep to start. But this is you know this is ideal. Some people you know have stimulants late at night, they got things in their mind or whatever going on, a bit more yep. adrenaline. Bit, Actually, you know, I've got to say, Steve, that's it. Like someone was saying the other day, like I've probably been more stressed over the last three years than I've yeah. been in ages. That's sad. And stress and and accumulation of body fat, I definitely notice as as, oh, as I've gotten older as well too. It's it's been bad. It's been a lot worse and more difficult to sh- to, to to move. Incredible because you got to remember, stress releases cortisol, yeah. release sugar in your blood yep. to escape the animal or to fight flight, whatever. Yeah. Now, if you don't, if you're stressed emotionally and you're not going to go for a run when you're stressed, then that sugar just turns back into fat. doesn't turn back into muscle. So one of the best things that you can do when you are stressed is yeah. go hit the gym. Absolutely. Go and, and burn up that sugar. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that's that's good for that, but it's also good for your brain as well. Mm. When you're stressed, uh, uh, um, you know, you've that got to- in release. Correct. Yeah. Stress is re- requires an, a physical action and usually. And endorphins too, yeah. right? Yeah, because you got to remember stress, you know, this, this worrying about business and stuff like that is a completely new thing to humans. See, though. Yes. Do you like Anchorman? I love Anchorman. I, you know, I love, I dress up as, I don't call them Ron Burgundy. It's, it's. Um, well, what do we call the, the character I dress up as from time to time? Isn't it uh, Mahogany. Oh. Uh, John Mahogany. But I think, <laughs> because I, I just love Will Ferrell. Like, yeah, honestly, Will, nice. you know, I know that you're listening. Um, <laughs> but we, um, we're like, we're like this. Yeah. Step yeah. Brothers, one of my yeah. all time favorites. But me the other day, I yeah. loved Anchorman. Anchorman 2, not so much Will, to be honest. But um, <laughs> An- Anchorman was honestly probably right up there in terms of one of my favorite comedies. And there's a yeah. lot of ad lib in there. And one of my yeah. absolute favorite scenes is yeah. the scene where he's standing there and, and, and Brick's walking away and they're yep. walking away and he's standing there and uh, he's sort of been homeless and he's drinking milk in the middle of the street. Do you remember that? I do remember that. So that was ad lib. So apparently, and again, apparently, apparently he um, went into the store and the, and the director said, I'll just grab something to drink and we'll drink it in the middle of the street. So he grabbed milk thinking (laughs) it would be funny. And he's sitting there drinking it and it was take after take after take. It was quite a warm day, quite hot. And he's sitting there and we're talking, you know, several hours into it. And of course Uh the milk's getting warm. Yes. (laughs) So he's sitting there drinking it and going, he was actually saying to the director and everyone around him, milk was a bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> Which, and you know what I think of Steve when I see that? What's that? I think of you. Oh, me? Yeah. yeah. Well, because it's you true. Do. Because, I mean, hashtag milk is a bad choice. So one of the funny things about, um, I've got a point to the story. <laughs> okay. Uh, and if you don't know that you're actually being marketed to, it's just, uh, yeah. um, is that that no way, which is which is body balance collagen, yeah. um, w- is actually really difficult to make taste like a milkshake because yeah. it's just not creamy, no. right? It's it's actually, you know, and 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 the, the team do a great job. What it's actually suited to yeah. is actually juice flavours. Yes. And it's cordial-like. Yeah. It's beautiful. So uh, hashtag milk is a bad choice. Go for ATP Science Juicy. So we've got several flavours in the juicy range. So if you're sick and tired of after a workout or on a hot day like it is here in, in the Southern Hemisphere where it's, where it's, you know, quite warm at the moment, yeah. grab the No Way Juicy and yeah. use that instead because yeah. literally they're designed to taste more like juices. Oh, so beautiful. in the juicy range, mm. we've got – so there's, there's pink lemonade, there's uh, grape, wild berry, and pineapple, mm. of which – Personally, my favourite is pineapple, but the biggest seller I think is the pink lemonade. Yeah, it's um, But look, if you if you're sick and tired of chocolate and vanilla shakes, yeah, and you want to try something a bit different, and what's really cool is it stacks really well with other products that you might yeah. want to add into it as well too that are more juice based. So, yeah. Um, yeah, guys, milk is a bad choice if you're over milk and it's hot and you want to have something where you can throw ice in there, blend it up as a bit of a frappe. Um, frappe. 100, a frappe. Oh, yes. Um, you know, you can have, you know, your ice crushed up with your, your, and you can drink that, and you're getting all of the benefits of your body balance collagen. Um, are there any artificial sweetness? No. Artificial colours? No. Artificial flavours? No. Dairy? No. Gluten? No. Oh. Lactose free? Yeah. It's everything free. So, guys, give it a try. Um, shameless plug. Um, but, yeah, if you're interested um, it's for something new, um, give No Way Juicy a go. Enjoy. So let's get back to growth hormone. So yeah. in terms of um, growth hormone 
um, production. When you sleep, you produce more. Yep. Um, because we got under stress then. I don't know how that worked out. No, it's, um, it's relevant. Um, if we were in the States, we could be doing what Joe Rogan does and smoke in the old peace pot. Oh, yeah. So they, you know that they, he does that? Yeah, I've, I've seen him do it with Elon Musk. Uh, no, that was recorded, so it's not like... It, it's legal, isn't it, to smoke in California? I, th- I think in many states in the US it is yeah. now. So anyway, that's to deal with stress, yeah, but sorry. in terms of growth hormone. Yeah. So you get a most amount of growth hormone when you when you first go to yeah. to, to sleep. Yeah. Um, and I saw there that it picks up a little bit towards the tail end of the oh, yeah. as well that, too, that, right? That, you, you wake up at that point there, you can see where... there, And that, yep. this is during the day. Now, when you eat, you release growth hormone as well. Re- else. Right. So the ways to stimulate growth hormone naturally, yeah. number one, and out of by by a mile, by, by literally yeah. twice as much. So yeah. on, it's five. What is it? Um, the highest n- you get nano- when you eat about three, right? And when you sleep, it goes to ten. Just for numbers' sake. Yeah, right. That looks f- f- like fifteen to me, Steve. And that looks like oh, five. They're, they're the margins of error. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, that that's the mean or what they call the average. That's yep. the margins of error. Yeah, because they measured like so. It's about th- three times as much. Yeah. Well, you, yeah. But yeah. eating can also help as well too. It does. So therefore, when people suggest, and, and this is the same with people that are trying to lose weight mm. and bodybuilders, from a calorie point of view, it doesn't make any difference to how many times you eat. That's right. But if you're eating more, if you're eating, say, six meals a day, yeah. would you produce more growth hormone? You would. So therefore, so, and this is the thing that I always find the devil's in the yeah. details, right? Because I know myself personally that when I was getting the best results as far as weight loss and building muscle is concerned, I was eating six meals a day. Yeah, sure. That, so, that works. Okay. So, so I mean, because this is this whole thing about calories in, calories out. Yeah. So, you will get better, you will get more growth hormone production if you eat regular smaller meals. Absolutely, you will. Huh. Now, now you'll see it more insulin because every time you eat, you release insulin. Sure. And growth hormone and insulin have a really unique relationship and we'll get on to that, but it's a really, it produces a powerful growth hormone called insulin-like growth factor one, yep. which is a... Uh, uh, a real interesting chemical. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, all right. So that's that's yep. naturally how you produce growth hormone. Yep. So, and growth hormone in the body, Steve, how does it build muscle? Is that to do with the IGF-1? IGF-1, yeah. And how does it decrease body fat? How does it impact skin and yep. hair? Because, I mean, again, beauty, mm. everybody wants to be more lean. Yep. Everybody wants to be more toned. Yep. Everyone wants beautiful skin and beautiful hair, Steve. So yep. growth hormone, how, do, how does it do all that? It works via, again, with insulin to form insulin-like growth factor one. So if you have healthy levels of that, that upregulates things like, remember mTOR? Yes. Remember that guy? Um, mammalian target of raptomycin complex one, if you want. Yes, the yes, But yes. That, that increases uh, collagen synthesis and protein and muscle gain. Right. So it works by that. Now, I've got a graph here um, from Men's Health, uh, World Journal of Men's Health. There you go. Without to say that anymore, that's, yes. what the, that's the name of the title. Yeah. Um, and you can see there that, 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 that it works via that way. Um, now, the interesting thing about that is when you have too much growth hormone, then it, then it has negative effects, but the right amount has a good effect. We'll get into the negatives yeah. in, in a bit. So basically, by producing more growth hormone, your body produces more. Is it is it just the IGF one that's having the impact, or because yeah. because growth hormone also oh, IGF no, it, two? It, it, it directly impacts bones and all sorts of other bones, things. Yeah, bones, it, it has a direct effect. IGF one so mainly it, muscle. It, it helps to take it helps to take nutrients, amino acids, yep. compounds, yep. and actually build more structure. Correct. So how does that help with fat loss, for example, then? Because this is effectively where you're releasing mm. or, or, or decreasing body fat. Yeah, it does. It helps with, with obesity. There's a major, major trials on this. And, and there's one that I'll, I'll, I'll quote here. This is from 2020. It's called Growth Hormone and Obesity. And basically, um, what they've found is that people, that, what the first thing they found was people that are obese have low growth hormone levels. And they went, well, that's interesting. It doesn't mean, you know, association doesn't mean causation for the scientists listening. But basically what they found is um, uh, obesity, and I'll quote here, is characterized by a reversal suppression of growth hormone secretion driven by elevated free fatty acids and normal insulin-like growth factor one. So you get normal IGF-1, which is that other growth thing, but the fatty acids in the blood secrete, secrete growth hormone. Is that is that through an association with ghrelin and leptin? Yes, Ghrelin and leptin, uh, leptin is the key mediator here. Leptin is a hormone secreted from fat cells. Yes. So how does that interact? Yeah. So growth hormone is great for insulin sensitivity. Yeah. Okay. So it makes insulin work. Yeah. So without it, insulin doesn't work. Yeah. 
and you get insulin resistance. Yes. Insulin resistance means the sugar basically turns into fat that you eat, doesn't go into the cells. Right. So you get fat if you've got lower growth hormone. So is it having a direct impact on IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor? Not directly. Growth hormone itself is separate from that in this instance. Uh It helps with insulin sensitivity growth hormone. Right. IGF-1 is normal in obese people. Right. And so you still, they get still still normal muscle mass. Okay. So they don't lose, in fact, obese people usually have a lot of muscle. Because A, they've got yep. still the IGF-1, mm-hmm. but also they've got to physically carry around a little bit extra weight every day or a lot of extra weight, depending on how heavy they are. Mm. So they still have normal muscle mass, but they have poor insulin sensitivity because that's what growth hormone does. Right. It helps with insulin sensitivity. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So so what they tried in, in obese people is they tried injecting them with growth hormone. Yep. Uh, it didn't really work. Right. It, it doesn't... That, but it comes down to the receptors too, yeah, right? receptors. So was their receptors downregulated from the growth hormone? Correct. So Is what, that why it didn't improve the situation? Exactly. And the way they, they, they reversed this problem was they gave them a very low carbohydrate diet, yep. so fatty acids in the blood drop, yep. and growth hormone levels come up. Right. So fatty acids suppress growth hormone. So yeah. if you get rid of the fatty acids, growth hormone comes up, insulin sensitivity comes up with it, and their metabolism comes back to normal. So it's funny, but it's, I'll mention a staff member downstairs. I'll, I'll tell yep. you off camera yep. who she is, but yep. she's a woman in her 40s. And I gave her some dietary advice about this, about getting rid of flour and sugar out of her diet. And she lost two kilograms in five days. No other intervention, no exercise, just did that. Now, I wanted to exercise. Now, was that glycogen, Steve? You, um, I mean, do we know how much body yes, fat Yes, some it of it would have been glycogen, but yep. she also feels better, has more energy, doesn't fall asleep after meals anymore. Yeah. So she feels, so you can tell her metabolism is working better. Okay. So I'm sure, yeah, yeah most of it, a lot of fluid and all that sort of thing. But but, well, but I, I guess in this over time as well too, yeah. that trend should continue. It will. Yeah, we've seen, we've done studies up to 12 months and it continues. Yeah. So it's it's good like that. But part of that is growth hormone coming back to normal. Right. Yeah. So, so it's an interesting one. It's a really good hormone for that. But people get a bit fixated on it and think, oh, that's the answer. I'm going to inject it. And they've tried it in trials and it hasn't worked. It's, it's, it's the fatty acids that block it. Okay. It's interesting, isn't it? It is interesting. It's, it's yeah. one of those sort of webs. It's almost like a tangled web of oh. Christmas lights that you're trying to go, hang on a minute. If you do yeah. this, then this equals that. No. So exercise, obviously, then would help with the receptors as well too. Absolutely. And, and, and improve growth hormone production, yep. but also the ability to utilize it. Correct. Now, now growth hormone is augmented by 280% if you exercise. Now, this is a study done on 2008 in the Journal of, um, which one was it? The Journal of, oh, the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. And what they found was people doing a particular exercise. In this case, it was just Smith machine squats. So they, they tested that exercise yeah. and it augmented growth hormone release by 2.8 fold. Wow. And that's beneficial. Okay. So, and, and there's some more stuff we want to get onto on supplementation. Yeah. Where there's an amazing one mm. we've spoken about before, but I'm interested in the duration and the and the benefits because you can produce a lot, but if you're not actually utilizing it, if it's not going into the receptors and actually having an effect. Correct. Here, right? So is, oh my gosh. So is, is because I want to talk about diet. I mean, obviously yeah. we've spoken about sleep already. I mean, diet's very interesting in terms of what you're saying. Yep. So it, if you were going to recommend someone to maximize growth hormone, a diet, yeah. what would that diet look like? Okay, what what they used to think was a low-fat diet. And the reason for that is because, because of fatty acids. Correct. Yes. And, and I was, I'm going through my brain going, hang on a minute. But if you were to go, my yeah. gut's telling me, my gut, yeah, my, my brain that's amazing, Stephen, can work things out that you, you know. But just, you know, yeah. the, the feeling is is that a, a, a ketogenic-based diet would probably be more effective at building muscle tissue. But the whole thing you said about fatty acids then yeah. seems counterintuitive. Yeah. So so what you've got to do is you've got to get fatty acids out of the blood because they block all sorts of receptors. Right. Okay. They, they stuff up receptors, triglycerides or fatty acids in the blood. So the way we used to think we got out of those is stop eating the fat and it will stop ending up in the blood. We now know that triglycerides or fatty acids are directly related to the amount of carbohydrate carbohydrates. Yeah. So what you've got to do is reduce the carbohydrate levels. Yeah. But you still need some insulin. Yeah. Okay. So how do you do that? Is protein stimulation? Yeah, I was going to say. Release. So so leucine, for sp- leucine specifically can help. Yeah. Le- the branched chain amino acids stimulate insulin release without the carbohydrates, so you get the insulin without the sugars or fats in the blood. So it's a terrific way to build muscle. Now, putting collagen to the side, yeah, because obviously that 
hits mTOR slightly differently. Yeah. Does collagen then impact? Because I was talking with a big sporting team and they were talking about, you know, recovery, and they were, they didn't understand the the benefits of collagen in terms oh. of mTOR and and. But they said, and rightly so, specifically branched chain amino acids, which have sort of fallen out of favor a little bit, Steve. But right. if you are on a ketogenic based diet, yeah. having branched chain amino acids in, in that sort of isolation could be very beneficial, very f- beneficial. for growth hormone production. Absolutely, it is. Yeah, right. Yeah, because you, you growth hormone to, to get the muscle building effects, you need IGF 1. So you get the insulin from the branched chain amino acids, the beneficial one. Specifically leucine. Yeah, yeah, leucine. Yeah. And that binds with the um, growth hormone and you get this massive IGF-1 release, naturally released. You don't want to take it endogenously, but naturally released, which is very beneficial for the muscles and recovery. Hmm. It's terrific. Yeah. Now, you know, collagen is terrific for that because it, it, it upregulates mTOR, not just by the branch chains, because it does have branch chains, of course, but also the amount amount of glycine. Glycine. Glycine is a great amino acid. So therefore, would branch chains amino acid and glycine be beneficial as a combination, Terrific. absolutely, be really good. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe we should look at adding glycine to our brush and amino acids. Anyway, oh, you could anyway. So I think in terms of um, supplementation is concerned. Yeah. yeah. So sorry, going back to diet. Mm. So you think that probably a carbohydrate restricted diet would be more efficient? Okay. What about then insulin? Because we know that if you're trying to build muscle tissue, mm. insulin is very anabolic. Yeah. Would you just limit insulin to around training times, or do you feel that leucine would do enough of a job? Leucine does do enough of a job because it does convert through gluconeogenesis, yep. correct, to be able to replace glycogen. Yeah. Does that increase insulin? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, so, so and it does. alanine can be. I'm broken sorry, down. Steve. You can tell I'm a little bit slow on the uptake no, that's here. That's right. So, so proteins release insulin as well. A lot of people don't. People think insulin and sugars, but protein does as well. Mm. Uh, and about half of the protein you consume is concerned can be converted into carbohydrates. So it's not. You remember, there's no such. There's, there's an essential amino acid. There's just essential fatty acids, but there's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate because the body can make them. Mm. So you don't. I mean, yes, it's great to eat vegetables and fruits and salads, but you don't need carbohydrates. Your body can make them. Yeah, you That's, need the you need the vitamins and minerals, obviously, of course. which typically is abundant in, but specifically fruits, vegetables, yes. those sorts of things. And they're extraordinarily healthy for you. <clears throat> so, so you can sort of get this growth hormone release, and protein augments growth hormone release. Okay. All right, so so far we've learned make sure you're getting adequate amounts of sleep that yep. produces growth hormone. We know that obviously exercising, specifically weight-bearing exercising. Now, you mentioned before Smith machine squats. Yeah. I mean, free squats would probably be better. Yeah. Leg press. Yep. Um, I'd imagine bench press, dead deadlifts. Oh, oh, yep. I mean, my understanding of just literally how the body is recruiting more muscles, the yep. bigger and the larger the muscles, the more if you like strain or stress that you're putting the body yep. under, it's going to enhance, you know, testosterone levels, growth hormone levels. Yep. Correct, correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, the, one of the best ways to release to to improve growth hormone release is to basically damage your muscles. Now, um, okay. There's, there's many ways to damage your muscles. Now, because because you got to remember damage them, them in a good way, in a good way, in an exercise like micro tears. Yeah. Yeah. So so there's a study done here on 24 hour growth hormone secretory profiles after aerobic and resistance exercise. Now, if damaging muscles is the way to, because your body goes, oh, I've got damaged muscles. How do I grow them back? I don't know. I'll release growth hormone. So that's how the body thinks. So what's what do you think that? And and, and I'm going to sort of set you up here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go on. Here we go. Come on. What was the best exercise? Yep. To release growth hormone. Deadlifts. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you some options. Okay. Because they options. tested them. Okay. Deadlifts. They, te- they okay. Yep. And okay. squats. Yep. Okay. Um, they they took eighty. This is this is really important. They put eight healthy men randomly completed five separate conditions. Firstly, the control, no exercise. Okay. Yep. The second one was a moderate duration one hour aerobic exercise. Um, the did, third, they, did they wear the the leotards? Yeah, of course they do. Uni tarts. You have to, you have like to, you have to wear uni tarts. Do you, I, I, do you wear uni tarts, Steve? Of course I do. Okay. Saturday nights, every mm-hmm. night. Um, uh, the th- Let's the, get physical, baby. The, the, the third option, a long duration aerobic exercise went for two hours. Boring. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, four, a moderate duration one hour uh, resistance exercise or four, a long duration resistance exercise session. Well, which, which one of those five released the most growth? Well, I'm going to say four. Number no, four? No, no, the last one. The last one, which the, the is long, the two-hour resistance exercise. 
Okay. Tell me, please tell me, please tell me it's not. Please tell me it's the short duration <laughs> exercise one because I don't want to be in the gym for two hours. Well, firstly, it, it wasn't it wasn't the control that did nothing. Yeah. It wasn't the one hour exercise. So no. let, let's out of two hour aerobic or two hour resistant. Which what one? What about the one hour resistant? Well, yeah, forget the one hours. They 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 did they did win. nothing. Okay, they 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 did something. Well, definitely t- not the two hour aerobic. It's got to be the two hour weight. Surely, surely. <laughs> Don't. I'm going <laughs> to kick you straight in the cods. <laughs> results. Only the two hour aerobic exercise bout resulted in a significant amplification of growth hormone secretion, evidenced by increase in growth hormone burst peak amplitude of over 100. percent Bull crap! Isn't that amazing? So you're saying I've got to go and run or get on the devil's tricycle for two hours, Steve? Do you, do you, but yeah, yeah. But this is this is what they said. I'm they not said, doing it. This is a paper, and I, you know, it's it's called 24 Hour Growth Hormone. It was published in 2014. What you, you mumbled over that 24 hour what? Growth hormone secretory profiles after aerobic and resistance exercise. So it went for 24 hours. Okay. Right. So it wasn't straight after you exercise. Right. So, you, you you know, they measured it for 24 hours. I don't believe, Steve, that <laughs> doing... Right. Okay. Right. right. You don't believe this? No, no. I, no, I don't. No. I question the science. I don't believe that you could do aerobic exercise and get more growth hormone production than what you could get after doing a heavy intensity like deadlifts, squats, you know, l- maybe leg press. I'm thinking of the things that have the most – I like the things that actually yeah. stimulate the nervous system more, yep. which is free weights. Even Smith Machine, great. But if you're actually having to balance the weight, mm. like this boy squats and deadlifts specifically, yeah. surely – well, there is a there is a really good reason why it didn't happen like that. Why? Is because you think about when you go to the gym. What do you do mostly at the gym? Perv on chicks. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> well, actually, yeah, yeah, that's that's no, a good answer. No, no, um, no. no. Mostly, um, you, you you're physically doing nothing because you're resting between sets. That's what you mostly are doing at the gym. You know, yeah, you're working out for ten seconds, really ten reps, whatever, and then you rest for thirty seconds or whatever. Thirty seconds. If you want ATP. Regenerations, if they're saying up for three minutes. Right. If you're doing a really heavy set, All right. typically most guys are, are resting for minimum two up okay. to three minutes, maybe sometimes longer if they're All on right. their phone. So, so let's say that you phone. do one, let's say you do 30 seconds of, of you know, three reps, three seconds, t- 10 reps, 10 seconds. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Let's, let's say it goes for a minute. It goes for a minute. Okay. And then you rest for two minutes. Yeah. What are you doing for most of the time? Yeah, you're you resting. You're resting. Yeah. And if you went for a run for two hours, yeah. you're running all the time. Yeah. Okay. More damage. Oh. Way more damage. And you also damage really? your, your heart. But the intensity more. of the damage when you're doing a deadlift, Steve, surely. If you do a deadlift yeah. for a minute, yeah. that would be like five minutes of running. But but you you, you don't deadlift for a, a minute. You know, a, de- a deadlift takes seconds. Oh, I see what you're saying. You see what saying. I'm saying? Yeah. So the amount of time. Okay. All right. you, st- you still get growth hormone release. And also you've got to remember that when you've run for 24 hours, you've done damage throughout your whole body and your heart and your cardiovascular system. And so therefore that has to be repaired as well. So over the 24 hour period, you get more growth hormone release. Oh, that sucks. I know, it sucks, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. But I don't mind doing two hour runs. But No, I know you don't. But, but I do. It's just, I mean, it's funny because, you know, I went to the gym this morning and did upper body and, um, I feel, but if I if I come here after a twelve hour run in the mornings, I feel like my whole body is like exhausted. Did you do a twelve hour run? Oh, sorry, twelve kilometer run. Oh, I was going to say twelve kilometer. Yeah, yeah. I say twelve hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but but isn't that interesting? It, it's yeah, it's it's disappointing. It's disappointing, <laughs> but but uh, especially for us that don't really enjoy aerobics. Hey, remember, it, this is not the easiest exercise. It's the best exercise. Mm. Here's the graph. I'm going to have to pull out my aerobics or so um, tapes again. Tapes VH. Yes. I've, I've, I've got some graphs for you which, which, show, which show in a very graphical term which, um, how much growth hormone is released. We'll put this on the screen, but I'll show you. There's the control. There, there's the spikes of, of growth hormone release. See, just bits and pieces when they sleep, of course. Moderate activity. But then you've got that, – that's moderate aerobic activity, MA. Yep. And so if you're watching this on YouTube, Matt's got these yeah. up. Yep, yep. Okay, if you're so, not, we'll explain them to you in a minute. Yep. So, so you can sort of say that moderate activity, moderate aerobic activity is about the same as the control group. Right? Yeah, it is. Yep. The long activity, which was two hours. Look at yeah, the growth, that's, that's a big spike. Yeah. Yeah, so, so obviously that's you're going for your run. Yep. Yep. Now look what happens in moderate release. Exercise is about the same as the control. Oh, jeez. Bugger all. A long, long resistance exercise for two hours at the gym. It's pretty good, uh, but it's not sucks. great. No, it's yeah, yeah, but, sure. But yeah. You, you see that big spike there yeah. in the long, long aerobic activity yeah. that occurs at night. 
Right. So it's not just after you exercise. You see, that that's the trick to this study. Right. So very interesting, isn't it? It is, mate. It's but, but it's disappointing if if you don't like running, but your body likes running. Yeah. What do they say? What do they say? Obesity doesn't run in the family. It's nobody runs in the family. Yeah, that's exactly right. That yeah. So sorry. Yeah. Okay. So that's bad news for the listeners, I think. But you got to remember that that still, I've got a, I've got a cheat that can give you more later. We'll talk about it later. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a cheat that if you want a resistance and get growth hormone, we can do that. Great. We can Great. Make that I'm happen. really interested in how long it lasts. Ah. Yeah, as Liz Smiley says, you just taste it last and last. Oh, that was funny. But, yeah, it? I think we need to look at that's a tennis player back in that. She's a lovely girl. She's a great tennis player, but she great got she player. got a she got a um a, a, a gig with Wrigley's Extra, and yeah. um, not very yeah. appropriate was it for that? Well, then she changed it. Then it changed to and the taste it goes on and on. <laughs> And then they went, hang on a minute, we can't do that. And then yeah. she had some speech through. She came back and she goes, and the taste, it really lasts. That's right. Yeah, she had a little bit of a lisp. Yeah, Liz um, Smiley, look it up on YouTube. Liz Smiley and uh, Extra. Extra, yeah. It's, it's kind of funny. It, it is funny. Yeah. It is funny. Yeah. So, I mean, I, that's good or bad news, but it's just news, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, don't worry, I've got the answer. If you want to do resistance, we, we can we can get there. In well, the- I just don't want to run, <laughs> Steve. I just don't want to <laughs> run. A, they did aerobic activity, so they, they picked the aerobic activity with the person. They just got their heart rate above 60%. So it wasn't like in high intensity, right. you know, flat out running. So if you want to go on the devil's tricycle or you want to. Yeah, um, I certainly don't want to do the devil's tricycle for a couple of hours. Oh, like Tony was doing it for 30 minutes and she just about fell off the other day. Oh, it was just crazy. Just yeah, long- on the devil's tricycle. I said, good on you. I mean, I, I can run along sort of because it's, it's cha- you know, scenery is yeah. changing. You're, See, I can't run anymore because I've done my knee badly. Yeah, I'm missing right. 11 mils of cartilage in my that's bloody right. knee. So running, I kind of run like an old man now. It's terrible. I run like an old man because I am an old man. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's sort of the, the, the trick to it. So um, what? growth hormone <laughs> is, <laughs> is really augmented if you do, if you wear your body out. You know, yeah. so, so you got to remember when you go to the gym for two hours, you're exercising for about, let's say, well, 30 minutes. Well, and, and again, I, I, the old adage is that if you listen to the smart people, you really want to be hitting your gym sort of no longer than about an hour. Yeah. Uh, for optimum. Now, again, this is based on old school yeah. and we have to look at this, but in terms of peak levels of testosterone, yeah. um, you know, realistically, you didn't want to be in the gym because mm. your cortisol levels got too long if you were working at really high yep. intensity for too long. And you got to remember that. We're only talking about growth hormone today. We're not talking about all the other hormones. No. Like, Test. So, so, yeah, testosterone Test. is a classic one. Yeah. And if, we're doing, a, yeah, if yeah. we're doing a podcast on those, it'd be different. Well, I'd say go do short, high intensity. Sure. But because this is a growth hormone, we have to, you know, show things. So, but, but it's, you know, we have to show what the evidence is saying. But it, it's but, very interesting. But you want high, high levels of growth, yep. high levels of test. Yeah. Modifying estrogen, uh, estrogenic levels. I mean, yep. you, we still need estrogen, but we just don't want to convert it down the pathway. But by the way, same with test. We yep. don't want to down too much DHT. A little bit's nope. good. Um, and, and with regards to cortisol, we want to l- limit too much of that or limit the duration of that. I mean, cortisol, again, good, wakes you yep. up, yep. gets you fight or flight. Yeah. Uh, small amounts good, but l- lots is bad. Yeah, lots of bad. You need some or you die. If you don't have any, yeah. you die. Yeah. You know, so if you have too much, you get Cushing's disease. So, you know, you, you've, you've got you major- You find those, those apex points, as we yeah, say. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And that's what growth hormone's all about. And you want high growth hormone when you sleep yep. and high growth hormone when you exercise. Yep. But you don't want high growth hormone all, right. all day, every day. So, so far, quality sleep. Yep. Um, it seems like, unfortunately, at the moment that the best exercise is going to be sort of- Steady state cardio of, of moderate intensity. Whatever you damage your body, yeah. So yeah, I know it's it's yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. Yeah, disappointing. Um, best kind of diet so far we're saying is one that avoids carbohydrates, really, and yep. probably more of your ketogenic based. Well, ketogenic sort of and but but more protein and ketogenic. Yeah. So ketogenic is a moderate to low protein. Yeah, this is a high protein. Um, diet, so that that's where you get the growth. The hormone. carnivore diet is funny, actually. I've yep. heard that making a bit of a comeback lately as oh, well, yeah. too. It's well, funny, there's right? that guy. Um, it was on television who uh, came out. He's a uh, liver man or something, and he admitted to growth. taking steroids. steroids. Yeah. yeah. Then we're, we're not we're not defaming the liver king. He, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because he did come out and say it on the Joe Rogan show. So it's uh, not like it's, my feeling is, I think he got busted. I think he oh, got hacked, and yeah. and yeah, he didn't. I don't think he wanted to. I mean, I think he was fooling people. I think he got caught with his with his syringes out. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, you that. know, I mean, it's nothing wrong if you want to do that, but you, you know, you don't lie about it. 
No, I totally agree. And a few people have been called out at the moment in terms of, hey, just come out and come clean. Let yeah. people know. Yeah. Uh, Rock is one, I think. Yeah. Where people are saying, you know, come on, are you, you know, do you expect people to believe that you're natural? Now, well, he might be. I mean, but, but what, 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 what problem is it? It's, it's up to the individual what they do to their own body. Well, I totally I mean, agree. Own it. If you're going to do it, own it. You know and what I mean? And testosterone replacement, and we could do, we could do a podcast on that, the benefits of that. Sure. I mean, there's healthy benefits as you age. Yeah. You know, like we, we talked about growth hormone replacement in children. That's healthy. That that brings a child up to a healthy level of growth hormone. And that's completely fine. As mm-hmm. we age, testosterone declines. Sure. And that's not healthy. You so, know. so let's then get into what do you want to where do you want to go next, Steve? Well, we could talk about the the downside of growth hormone if you have too much of it. Okay. Well, exogenous hormone. Then we, let's cover ah, this all together. Yeah. So, right. so if you go and a lot of people. Uh, black market. Yeah. Um, a lot of people go and see their doctors to get yep. growth hormone. Yep. Um, and, and the in the hope of anti aging, I think is yep. the way that they used to describe it. Correct. Right? So, because we know that our growth hormone diminishes as we get older. Yep. Uh, maybe people aren't as active. Maybe they're doing all these things, but they want to maximise it. But what's the good and the bad of exogenous growth hormone? All right. It, it's very. The first thing is with anything you take, you know, like orally or inject, it's not regulated by the body. Now, the body is the king of regulation. It gives you the right amount. If it's healthy, if it's unhealthy, then you can I take- I thought the Australian government was the king of regulation. But yes. anyway, obviously, <laughs> I'm wrong. <laughs> oh, dear. So, so the body will regulate these hormones if it's in a healthy state at very healthy levels, and exercise augments this great release. Yep. Now, if you take an injection, um, unless it's closely monitored or you're having a higher- you know, if, you, if you're as healthy and you're injecting it, which a lot of people who have growth hormone are already healthy, so that brings you up to two high levels, and there are links to high levels of growth hormone and things like cancer. Yes, I yep. have heard this, especially yep. IGF-1. IGF-1 is a, is a real problem with cancer. Yeah. So um, let's, let's go back to growth and we'll get right, to IGF-1 sure. in a minute. There's a paper released called, and you're going to love this review paper, it's called Growth Hormones Links to Cancer. So, <laughs> uh, And it basically says, okay, growth hormone doesn't start cancers. No. But, but if you've got cancer, yeah. and, and this is my understanding, Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of people have cancer in their body. Yeah. But the body has its own ways of dealing with it and keeping a lid on it. Yeah. Once you put growth hormone in, it's literally like throwing fuel onto a fire and replication of cells becomes greater than the body's ability to be able to oh, deal with it. Absolutely. You've got this thing in the body called the cell cycle, and it yeah. goes through G0, G1, S and M phase. M is mitosis phase. S is synthesizing new genes. And you've got this nice cycle like that, okay? And it's it's replicating cells because you're always sloughing them off and all this sort of thing. If that's sped up with things like insulin and growth hormone, then mistakes happen. Yeah, and you miss these things, and you get these mutations, and effectively cell death, right? Yes. Like this, this ap- apoptosis. Apoptosis, yeah. Yep. And and especially if you've also got really lots and lots of um, antioxidants to yep. deal with free radicals yep. and that sort of stuff. There's some really cool compounds and foods as well oh, too yeah. that people have said polyphenols, um, e- even B17. There's yes. some other things as well too that naturally are occurring in our diet, less and less, by the way. But um, these things can help to not need to put the lid on, but actually help deal naturally, naturally, um, with with that sort of stuff. Absolutely, one of one, of, and we always we have these what they call pea proteins, which um, are just letter P proteins, and one of the most famous ones is P fifty three, and that's like a little handbrake on this cell cycle, just regulates the cell cycle. And if you smoke, it knocks out P fifty three. Right. So that's one of the mechanisms why we smoke gives you cancer. <laughs> right, right, right. One of them. Right, right. <laughs> but but for example, epigallocatechin gallate. Which is found in green, green tea. tea. Yeah. Yeah. What about ECGC? Yep. Uh, that that chemical regulates the cell cycle beautifully. So that's a very potent yeah, right. anti carcinogenic agent. But so is many other polyphenols. Yes. Um, they're, they're, that's probably one of the more researched ones. Yeah. There's many of them. Yep. And, um, and they regulate growth hormone is like, you know, putting fuel on the fire. But you've got to have fire first. Yes. So if, if I throw fire on a bunch of leaves, nothing will happen, will it? But well, if, there's, what? If, there's, if you throw fire, you mean... Oh, sorry, petrol on I was a bunch say, of leaves. If you throw fire on leaves, Steve, they're going to burn. <laughs> yeah, they're going to it's burn. It's called chemistry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, man. I'm like... That's all right. That's a trick question. I was thinking of getting my head myself. If you, yeah, it, so, yeah, that's right. If mm. you throw fuel onto carpet, yeah, then it's nothing. nothing. But if the carpet's on fire a little bit and I throw fuel on it, it'll, you know, woof. And that's, spark. and that's what growth hormone does. Yeah. So, you know, it doesn't cause cancer, 
But if you've got cancers, and you've got to remember, mutations happen all the time in the body. Cancer cells are always being made and usually being taken out by either cell death or by, you know, natural killer cells or any other macrophages or any of those sort of natural killer cells, any, any immune cells that gobble up cancer cells. Yeah. <laughs> Getting back to it. Yes. In, in terms of um, a growth hormone, so then what is IGF-1? Because we mentioned it. Yeah. And insulin-like growth factor is a lot of people take that to build muscle tissue well, and plenty yeah. of it. It's Is it a compound within growth hormone, Steve? It's a compound made um, in the liver when you get growth hormone and combine it with insulin. Yes. Okay. So let's 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 give you the perfect storm. Let's say you're injecting growth hormone and you're you're having a high insulin type diet, like a high sugar diet. Well, a lot of bodybuilders yeah. post workout. Mm. They might consume high amounts of simple sugars yep. to create insulin themselves. Yep. A lot of the high end ones will actually inject insulin. Yeah. Um, to, to obviously help because insulin is more anabolic than testosterone. Very much so because it, it binds with growth hormone to form IGF one. Yeah. And IGF one is highly anabolic. Yeah. We can very you know there, there's a great story to tell you how it builds muscle and makes you grow dramatically. Yeah. And IGF-1 is found naturally in some foods, which makes that animal what grow foods? dramatically. Oh, uh, cow's milk. Yeah. and the Cow's milk is is an incredibly good source or bad source of IGF-1. Well, and it's funny because I hear a lot of younger guys going, ah, awesome. Yeah. I'm going to go get my whey protein, put it on milk, yep. and get huge amounts of growth hormone. Yes, exactly. And and one of the great consumers of dairy are the Bavarians. So we we, we go we, we use the Bavarians for, for studying um, cow milk consumption quite a lot. The Bavarians? Yeah. Okay. And we're not talking about – are we talking about homogenized and pasteurized? Are we talking about, you know, lactating chemicals and, uh, and, the, uh, and the abomination of food that it's become? Or are we talking about back in history, oh no. you know, where, where they used to suck the udders so that little babies would come out and they would just suck on the, the cow's udder and, and get and get <laughs> milk well, straight from well, the cow? If the, if the cow's milk has bacteria in it, it's not too bad for you. Yeah, so, so there's this study published and it's called The Association of Dietary Milk and Dairy Products with, milk con- with, with Blood Concentrations of Insulin-like Growth Factor 1 in Bavarian Adults. Right. Okay, so they looked at these adults. These Bavarians. Said, Bavarian. Are they, are they German? Yeah, I think yeah. they are. Yeah, European. Yeah, Bavarian bear so, hall. So, so what they found um, um, that our findings, and I'll just read the conclusion and we can nail it down a bit. Our findings are in line with most previous investigations support the hypothesis that dairy and milk intake are associated with higher IGF-1 concentrations. Great. So you have more dairy, you get more IGF-1, and it gets into your body. Growth hormone, if you ingest it, gets broken down. IGF-1 gets in the body. Mm. So they found dramatically, um, but there was no association between dairy intake, like cheese or yogurt, and IGF-1. Right. So yogurt's got the be bacteria yep. and cheese has been digested by the rennet. That's right. So um, let's say you want IGF-1 loads of it, and I'll give you a good reason not to, but let's say you do for growth, yep. then cheese and yogurt won't do it for you. You've got to go for the milk. Yeah, you've got to go for the milk. And 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 what type of milk? It's got to be the pasteurized milk. Why? Because the bacteria in it digests the IGF-1. So if it's pasteurized, the IGF-1 remains stable. What happens if it's not pasteurized? It breaks down. Yeah. Over time, it just breaks down, like over days. When did pasteurization become a thing, Steve? Ooh, I don't know. Louis Pasteur, right? Probably. Well, we, he, yes. he, he was the inventor of the micro. Yes. So, I think it so pasteurization, after. when did milk start becoming pasteurized? Well, in a lot of countries, it's not pasteurized. Let's, have a, look, they, let's have a look, Matt. Yeah, let's see. When, when did, when when did pasteurization, pasteurization start happening? Mm. I reckon... Right, when did, it, when did it become commonplace for milk? 1920s. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. So it's been pasteurized for about 100 years now. Mm. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. So that's good. So uh, before that, of course, you were having just raw milk typically. Yeah. And that's that's completely fine when it comes to IGF-1. Sure. So really good. Now, one of my heroes in the science... But you're world, not convincing these young guys going, oh, sweet, I'm just going to go drink milk. Oh, no. And again, it's totally up to them. Yeah. I mean, you got to remember that, that if you want to build muscles, you do healthy things and unhealthy things. Sure. You know, they, they take unhealthy levels of testosterone. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. If that's what they want to do, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's like, it's up to them. We're but what are you the- paying the piper if you're drinking pasteurized milk? I mean, obviously, you're increasing firmicutes as well, too, which is oh, obviously yeah. more inclined. Yeah. Well, firmicutes will increase anabolism. Yeah, you know, depends on what type of anabolism. Yeah, but I mean that's why babies have lots of firmicutes. To, to but but 
but Steve, what's the problem with it? Acne. Acne is very one. Acne is incredibly um, potent when it comes to cow's milk. Why? Because of IGF-1 is the most important thing. IGF-1 grows in the pores to grow the skin shut. So your pores actually get blocked up of oil and you get a little bit of this acne um, bacteria called propionyl bacteria. Okay, well, they're going, well, I'm going to go and take some retinol A or I'm going to go take some, uh, what's the thing that kids take to... Ro- 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 oh, ro- ro- yeah, oh, okay, geez. but they're, but they're going. Okay, I still right. want to grow. Okay, okay, you still want to grow. Well, I'm going to read the title of this review paper, and you might want to change your mind. It says insulin-like growth factor signaling in glucose metabolism in in colorectal cancer. Yeah, and this is a problem I think a lot of younger people yeah. go. But I'm young. I'm not going to get cancer. Yeah. I'm not going to die. <laughs> well, they the, do. Yeah. I mean, we've done a podcast with a young woman mm. who had terrible bowel cancer yeah. and, you know, spoke about it here yeah. at length. Um, so, yeah, you get, you get bowel cancer is extraordinarily common, but it's not just bowel cancer. It's any cancer. I think that's how um, Kirstie Allen died, bowel cancer. Yeah, 71, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah, quite quite scary. Yeah, very scary. Um, basically, um, you know, it, it's, you know, of course, this review and this review, the one I'm, I'm quoting from, describes um, the role of IGF-1 in glucose um, metabolism in physiology and colorectal carcinogenesis, including the role of insulin and insulinized growth factor in the Wahlberg effect. Does everyone know what the Wahlberg effect is? Is that Marky Mark? Yeah, it's Marky Mark Wahlberg. Yep. Wahlberg effect was about 1930, I think, where a scientist called Wahlberg uh, came out and said the cancer cells can only survive off glucose. Yes. So that that we we now know that that is true but but that was new in 1930 yeah so if you're having a high insulin sort of like carbohydrate diet like you're eating a lot of grains like the typical australian so let's say you're having a lot of grains so say you're having a lot of um wheat based breakfast cereal yep okay which is very and you pour milk on it yep you're in trouble yeah pasteurized milk and then you might put sugar on that well, yeah uh you know can you yeah. think of a worse way to get cancer no but and look when i was growing up that was 100 percent. that's what i used to eat that was the the the, yeah full cream pasteurized milk yep with 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 wheat bix and sugar yep that's exactly right that's that's what a most or worse is worse what if you have something like loops that are high in sugar Loopy, loopy fruits, or or some chocolatey, cuckoo poofs, rice puffy, cuckoo poofs. Yeah, high sugar Um, with milk. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, imagine eating that for breakfast every day, and and I'm not just imagining it. Pop tarts. Yeah, those sorts of things with milk. That's why I like the Cinnabons because at least they've got cinnamon that can help with insulin. <laughs> but um, you're right, Steve. I mean, like the yeah. sugar seems to abound everywhere, right? So, but you you add that with IGF one or just pasteurized cow's milk. Poof. I mean, and you have that, and let's say you have a, a sandwich for break for lunch with a with a, a flavored milk mm-hmm. that's full of sugar yeah. and milk, mm-hmm. pasteurized milk. Yeah, it's disastrous. Here's the here's my biggest beef, and this is where I'll get on my soapbox a bit. Is some Areas of this world still recommend that kids drink pasteurized milk oh, every day. Absolutely, and a big one of that is around vitamin D. Yeah, when you know, and and again, it's 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 kind of a bit of a yeah. It's amazing how these things persist. Yeah, a good marketing strategy. I mean, you got to take your hat off to these people. Incredible. Um, this is a paper from um, um, Bodo Melnick, which is a, a a pretty famous scientist that I love. He, he's he's Absolutely brilliant when it comes to all this sort of stuff with dairy and that sort of thing. He released paper 2021, uh, Advanced in Medicine, and the conclusion was, and you're going to love this, um, fermented milk, but not the consumption of fermented milk products, can increase the risk of common lifestyle diseases. Avoiding milk, especially pasteurized fresh milk, could prevent the reoccurrence of common Western lifestyle diseases, including cancer. So the big takeaway from this is is that yeah. if you like growth hormone and if you like the idea of IGF-1, yeah. if you were to take dairy pasteurized, could yeah. it be bath milk or other mm. forms of it, that yes, you will get the growth factors, but it can make cancer cells grow. Oh, it, so it you, does you, make you, cancer cells you, grow. you may increase the muscle size, but there's healthier ways to be able to do Correct. it. There's Correct. Correct. Way healthier ways. Now, now you know, there, there is a, a, a nice... Um, and, and we'll put this up on the screen. This is from that paper, which which I'll, I'll point out to you. But you can see the, the clear differences from unfermented milk to fermented milk. Yeah, well. Fermented milk, cancer, unfermented milk, lack of cancer. Yep. Incredible, isn't it? Well, it is. So it's just, 
it's pretty stark that what 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 these what and what these you mean by fermented are, is is uh, is pasteurized. Yeah, yeah. Well, pasteurized is is fermented milk is is like you know anything like yogurts or any of those raw milks, any of those yep. ones with bacteria in it. Yeah, and yogurt has bacteria. We yep. all know that, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As, as opposed to pasteurized, sorry. Yeah. So pasteurized, pa- pasteurized is obviously killing off the natural bacteria yep. that are required as part of the digestion process. Yeah, is what we believe, and the way again nature knows best. That's yeah. the way that nature did it. Um, but obviously, pasteurization meant that the, the milk lasts lo- longer. Yep. They said, "Oh, there's evil bacteria in the milk that can kill you." Yes, it just seems to be exactly the opposite it, again. It is exactly the opposite. So, all right. Lastly, then coming into supplementation to improve growth hormone. So, so so right now there's ways of, and means of being able to increase growth hormone yep. but doing it safely. Yep. Um, yes, you can get a significant whack by having pasteurized milk but you've got the negative benefits to deal with which we don't recommend, Steve. No, yeah. it, it, the science doesn't recommend that. It, it, it's too risky. Like, you know, let's just say you just got acne. It's like, whatever, I'm married. I don't need good skin anymore, whatever. <laughs> but, but the big C... Is scary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very it's scary. It's very, very scary. Yeah. So, so scary very, dairy. Very, Good podcast if you want to listen to very it. Very podcast. So, so, so then that's Steve, the, yep. growth hormone production. Yeah. And we'll recap at the end. But what are the best herbs that you can take to, or, or, or amino acids that you can take to enhance growth hormone production? The best one researched by far is a, an agent called Alpha GPC, which is which Alpha GPC yep. is. What exactly? Alpha glycerophosphocholine. Right, and there's just a bunch of amino acids. Well, yeah, in it's a an, specific it, combination. It is, and it's sort of it's more like a fat actually. This thing, but but it's 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 quite a, it's amino acid fat, so it's like a lipoprotein is what they call it. Yeah, not, not like that bad cholesterol thing. Sure, but it's a it's it's a lipoprotein. So and, it's, it's, and how does it work? All right. What it does is when you um, exercise, you healthily release growth hormone. Remember, this is the stuff you make. Sure. Yeah. This augments that release dramatically. Now, when I say dramatically, I mean dramatically. So going back to what you said before, I mean, most yeah. people will take this before they do sort of a, yeah. you know. Mind you, I'd imagine that CrossFit would produce gro- more um, growth hormone because you're actually exercising, you know, a lot of the times, depending on the type of what that you're doing, with more endurance-based exercise and that the rest time is less, so the heart rate's higher. So Absolutely. Like, you do more damage. So. How much does it increase? And in, in that study, what was it done on? Because it sure. showed incredible results. And, and well, I've, got, I've got the I'll, study I'll, here. I'll, I'll do the spoiler here: four thousand four hundred percent increase in baseline growth hormone. Production. Correct. So when you exercise, you release um, growth hormone. Now, at baseline, um, it's, it's zero. So let's just start with there. When you exercise, it goes up to two point eight times, or two hundred eighty percent. So exercise increased growth hormone. Yeah. In this case, they did squats. They just picked on that one sure. because they tested it. If you take alpha GPC with that, you'll get a four thousand four hundred percent increase of growth hormone over baseline. Steve, do you have the percentage of increase in testo- in growth hormone when doing that long state cardio? Do you know how much the increase oh, that was? Because yeah, well, that would be interesting. Throwing that study on the floor. Because uh, what, <laughs> what what I mean, the, what I'm thinking is is that then. If you were to take alpha GPC before doing a, a long state cardio, yeah, it'll work. What? But how? But it probably would increase it by four thousand four hundred percent because otherwise you'd be turning into a yeah, into a into a beast. Okay, so here we go. No long long aerobic activity, and I'm just looking at the the nighttime peaks when you're supposed to release it. Yeah, is about double. It's about double the, the well right. So the it's, it's about two to three times more than doing than doing. Weights. Yeah. Now this was over a twenty-four hour period. Right. Okay. So this one is is when you exercise. Okay. So how long does it last in the body for? It lasts about two hours, which is which is ideal. Okay. Because you, remember, you only want growth hormone to come out in, in a pulsatile thing. You only want to come out when it's needed. Yeah. You don't want it floating around. In fact, if you look at the graphs, mostly it's on zero growth or low close to zero. So so doing some exercise, yep. you're going to increase your growth hormone by about 300%. Yep. As opposed to when you're doing long aerobic exercise, yeah. which has a 24-hour systemi- yeah. s- systemic effect, yeah, mainly which is, at night. Which is a, about uh, three times more than that. So, Correct. So, so, yeah, so, so it's even greater again. But if you were to use yeah. alpha GPC – for about a two-hour period after you do squats, yeah. deadlifts, bench press, mm. what have you, your growth hormone levels is going to go to what what height? 
Well, it goes to the, the number, um, and I'll give you this is a different figures. This is nanograms per mil, but the numbers are irrelevant. They go from um, 0.19 yeah. to 8.4. Wow. Yeah, 4,400%. So um, that's an increase. Over baseline. Over baseline. So w- oh, over exercise, it's about 10 times. More, but you get ten times, well, just over ten times more release than just exercise alone. Right, and you want that because yes, you want the pulsatile release so your body can recover. Yeah, and that's what growth hormone release is all about. So yeah. exercise will give you that two hundred and eighty percent. Yeah, but if you take it with alpha GPC, now here, here's the I, I the got caveat. a bit of a caveat. You ready yeah. for it? Yes, it's got to be six hundred milligrams. Yes, and most companies do not put no. that in. It looks it's an expensive compound. Yep. Look, from what I've looked at, and I'm looking at some of the yep. leading um, pre workouts in the marketplace, yep. that they're putting somewhere between sort of a hundred mm. and sort of three hundred is probably the maximum yeah, that I've I, seen. I think I've seen two fifty. Um, in, in and realistically, this is six hundred. Yeah, yeah. So you need you need to double scoop it and some. And some, and I don't know what the caffeine level will be after that. If you do for for someone on the market there, and not only that, you'd have to trust the the company that they're actually <laughs> actively accurately putting in there because it is oh, an yeah. expensive compound. I yeah, mean, I've looked at it expensive. as well too. Going, holy cow, right? And one another little bonus to it too. Yeah. It increases um, strength by fourteen percent. That's bench that's, press. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it went from um, with the Alpha GPC, it was nine hundred and thirty-three newtons, which is a, a measure of force. Right. And without it, the placebo, because it was a placebo controlled trial, was eight hundred uh, eight hundred and eighteen newtons. Oh, that, that's significant. Yeah, it is. Point point oh two significant. What's well, interesting as well too is that if you put hydration on the top of that as well too, oh, most yeah. studies have shown six percent increase yeah. in strength. So if you if you can do a hundred kilos, if yep. you're properly hydrated, and most people, more than fifty percent of the population are not properly hydrated, yeah. you're going to put an extra six kilos on your bench press. Yeah. Which is which is massive. I know. And 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 the amazing amazing release of growth hormone with with this particular study that was taken 90 minutes before the trial. Now, it doesn't mean you have to do, you know, measure it, but, but about an hour. Yep. You take it, but you have to take, again, 600 milligrams. Yep. Okay. Which is, which is tough because, you know, it's it, there's not many companies out there that have 600 milligrams. Any other herbs or compounds that you can take to improve growth hormone? Not um, only panic sensing. Okay. How much does that increase it by, do you know? It was about, uh, over, the, over the exercise, was about doubled it. So that's that's good, but nowhere near alpha GPC. Would it stack? Oh yeah. Would 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 panic ginseng and alpha GPC if you had them together? Would they? It'd have to. You, 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 there's no trials on them both together, hmm. but I imagine it would. I that's can't interesting. See. Yeah, panics. theoretically. Yeah. Oh, okay. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. What else, Steve? Anything else? Um, what about no. ornithine, arginine? Yeah, ornithine and arginine are good to take before you sleep. Yes. Why? Uh, because they su- suppress this chemical called somatostatin, which is like the handbrake for growth hormone release. So you take that at night, and then it it, it you get much more of a spike. Now, here's, guess guess what those amino acids are high in? Milk. They're very high in collagen. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Really? So if you had collagen at night. Yes, you were um, naturally going to do that. They yeah. don't need to be taken in isolation. No. Sweet. No, because they, they, they're broken down. Amino acids are broken down into amino acids in the yeah, body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and glycine is very important, which is very high in, guess what? Collagen as well. Wow. And so if you, you could also take that with something to help you sleep, like a magnesium glycine or magnesium diglycinate or burst glycinate with collagen, you get even a better sleep. Wow. And that's cheating a bit because that releases growth oh, look, when you sleep. We're all about biohacking. Yeah. Steve. And this is the cool thing, right, is that people want to know what they can do yep. to, to enhance it. And I just, I just in the back of my head, these young, stupid kids, I just say, oh, I'm going to take milk because I'm going to get all this IGF-1 and I'm going to grow. Yeah. yeah, but you could potentially die. You could get really bad acne. And there's ways to be able to do things safely. Yep. So, Steve, what else? Is there anything else we need to cover? Otherwise, I'm going to summarise. No, I think we should summarise because you could go down lots of rabbit holes here and we, that might be for better podcasts down the future. Yes. Oh, by the way, just a little side effect of Alpha GBC. Yes. Anti-carcinogenic. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, I, I, I've got the paper and here. it also I? has a positive effect on brain chemistry. Dro- as well, well, that's so what it's mainly used for. Uh, dopamine. Yeah. Well, serotonin. It, it's... It, Keep guessing. No, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Acetylcholine. Acetylcholine. Yeah, because because choline yes. is part of alpha-GPC. Yeah. Well, the C part is choline. Yeah. And so it boosts um, choline in the brain, which increases acetylcholine, yeah. which is a dramatic, one of the most abundant neurotransmitters in the brain. Right. So as a side effect of growth hormone, it's great for your brain. That's what it's mainly used for. 
but it's also a potent anti-carcinogenic agent. Cool. So you're going to feel good. You've got strong anti-carcinogenic com- components and good strong growth hormone, like significantly and, and better bench press by fourteen percent. <sighs> Very, very good. Okay. Problem so, 600 milligrams. Yeah, big, yeah. big dose. And it's relatively expensive. Right. But okay. So, in terms then, recapping. Yeah. Quality sleep. Very, yep. very important for very important. production. You, you want to make sure that you're limiting the amount of, of, of carbohydrates. You're better off getting more, more leucine yep. and or collagen um, in your diet to, yep. to, to support growth hormone production. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to be exercising. Any form of exercise is good, but absolutely, it seems like long aerobic (laughs) training seems to have the best. Over a 24-hour period, yep. I'm not Uh, doing it, Steve. Unless you Um, cheat. I'm going to cheat. Oh, good. And I'm going to use Alpha GPC uh, with my exercises. Yep. And um, I I might even have a look at Ginkgo as well too, Steve. Ginkgo's Um, good. It would be interesting. I'd I'd actually really like to do a a look at the studies with the combination of both of those compounds together. Yeah. Um, Then uh, before bed, you want to be getting collagen, specifically looking for the amino acids, uh, glycine, um, ornithine, Ornithine and and arginine. arginine. Yeah, very good for your heart as well, by the way. It's a side effect. Right. So arginine makes it, it makes nitric oxide, so it increases blood flow. Well, a lot of people take arginine to increase nitric oxide, but we yeah. find that citrulline actually works better. better. Yeah, much so um, uh, okay, and I think that sort of covers everything. Uh, Anything else, Steve? No, look, it just just remember that that the growth hormone. We were just talking about growth hormone today. People are going to write in and say, "Yeah, but what about this hormone and that hormone and testosterone and exercise and." Uh, yeah, we're just, it's a growth hormone. Well, well uh, at Test and, and Estrogen and a couple of more podcasts that we want to do, Steve, because we want to talk about them. And, and, and again, in isolation and, and under focus, it looks at yeah. it, but you want to, as I said, boost test, boost um, growth hormone, um, r- regulate and modify um, estrogen, mm-hmm. and, and same with, um, with, with cortisol, uh, cortisol as well too. But, um, yeah, excellent compound. You need it. Uh, mm. You want to stay young, mm. fit, healthy, lean, muscular, high energy. Growth hormone is incredibly important. So hopefully some of these little takeaways, little biohacks, mm. you, you can utilize to improve your natural growth hormone production yep. without straying into the areas of uh, exogenous or using things like milk, which may have the piper to pay. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, you want it at a healthy level. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking for that extreme level, then just be mindful that you could have some side effects specifically around cancer. Yes. Uh, that might not be the greatest. Okay. Yeah, FAQs. So F- I'm calling them FAQs. <laughs> okay, yeah, F-A-Q's. just say it like that. That yeah. might be F-A-Q's. a little. Okay, we'll yeah. call them the FAQs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff and Steve, a FAQ for you <laughs> and me. Okay, here we go. Um, I have a question that could be answered on a podcast. Does fat inhibit protein absorption? Mm. If so, should I avoid mixing my no way powder with coconut milk? Thanks. Well, that is interesting. And can I just say without answering this question, when I'm doing my ketogenic-based diet, I absolutely mix my collagen with coconut milk. Milk, yeah, protein. So I do, Steve, but yep. am I doing the wrong thing? Are we no, doing the wrong thing? Totally fine. Think, okay. think about nature. Let's say you're hunting and killing a kangaroo, cow, whatever. When you eat the animal, you're eating the fat and the protein together. The body has is used to doing that. It, it normally does that. You eat If you're a vegan, I don't know who would be a vegan around here, but, you, but let's say you ate, you're a vegan and, you, and you, vegan. you ate, oh, yes, of course. But let's say you ate some peanuts, which is full he's of protein. He's hunting those peanuts. Yes, he's that, hunting killers. Mm. Well, they're full of fat and protein and yep. they're digested totally fine. Yeah. So, they, so pre- in nature, they are found together. They are, absolutely. Now, that, now getting a bit nerdy is one of them is absorbed in the bloodstream the amino acids and the lymphatic system absorbs the fat so they're totally different separate things because and that, and that's what you want and and about a hundred percent of fat and a hundred percent of protein is absorbed a little bit gets through but you say around a hundred percent of each um, carbohydrates some some of them are not absorbed because we can't digest them they're called fibers but typically a hundred percent of fat a hundred percent of proteins are absorbed if not you might have you know a bit of fat in your stool that's a problem okay so just remember that it, yes, no problem to have them together. In fact, it's it's fine. It's 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 actually beneficial and normal. Well, and, and again, like I think in the new year, I'm changing up my diet a little bit. Probably going back to a ketogenic style. Oh, good. Well, probably again, it's it's more high protein. I yeah. wouldn't say it's a carnivore diet because I'm mm. I'm not really like that. But similar to the sort of cyclical eating that I used previously, which I got my best results with, and yeah. I felt a lot better on as well. I know you will. 
So that's kind of one of my go-to sort of meals, to be honest, absolutely. Is, is collagen protein with coconut milk. That's very good. Yep. Absolutely. So, yeah. Okay. That was cool. an easy one. All right. Um, okay. So, Steve, the second question here. Yes. Some really nice words here as well, yeah. too, and we really appreciate this. So, um, a bit of a question, but I'm just going to read the the, the the first part. Eagerly await notification of your latest podcast p- popping up on my phone on Tuesday afternoons. I know that I'll get to binge on the latest, most relevant health supplementation info and laugh along with you guys as I commute and go um, for my evening walk. Love your guys' work. Well, you know, really appreciate it. Um, it may, we've, we love that, Steve. Yes, we we, we love touching people. Yep. Um, <laughs> So we'd like just my married wife as, for those who <laughs> touch as many people as we can. We can, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, it, it is great. And again, uh, part of what we like to do, Steve, is, is help people at the yeah. end of the day, right? Zig Ziglar, help, help as many people as we possibly can. Absolutely. So um, yeah, thank you very much for that. Uh, okay, now onto the question. My question has to do with slumps and energy. Mm. Uh, for me personally, um, my mornings um, start between 8.30 and 9.30 and I feel a real slump in energy. This has been going on for years. It's like everything, every particle of my get up and go gets up and leaves. <laughs> I feel tired, heavy and irritable and just want to go back to bed. Gradually it passes after about an hour or so with the help of coffee and some fruit. I would love to know how to avoid the slump and what I can do to get out of it faster. I've tried mixing up my macros for breakfast, changing my wait times and breakfast, morning exercise, sleep hygiene um, and going without uh caffeine all with no avail after talking to a friend the other day and i'm alone with these morning slumps um that afternoon slump um just gets all the press keep doing what you're doing guys you're changing lives thank you for your consideration on my question it's true steve the afternoon slump is the one that we focus on but the morning slumps the morning grumps yeah um so what's the deal with that. Sure. Now, normally in a healthy situation, an afternoon slump is not the end of the world because- cor- Sugar, right? Yeah, as sugar and cortisol right. is dropped. Now, in the morning, you should feel bubbly because your cortisol level spikes at around 8 or 9 a.m. Yeah. Some people are flatliners where they don't. They don't get that morning spike of cortisol. It's a good movie, by the way. Is it flat? Yeah, it is. Yeah, That's yeah, with yeah. all that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Julia Robertson. Yeah. Yeah. So so that-, that And the other dude who was on 24? Uh, Jack Bauer? Jack Bowie, yeah. No. Keith Sutherland. Keith Sutherland. Keith Sutherland, yeah. And um, the guy from Footloose. He was on, oh, wasn't Bacon. He? Yeah, wasn't he here? Yeah. Bacon? Yeah. Bacon. Who doesn't love bacon? Oh, I love bacon. Yeah, yeah, Matt. How can you, even as a vegan, do you not like bacon? Wow. You don't like bacon? No, that's what makes me a vegan, I guess. <laughs> bacon. Strange. Um, so the morning slump is when you don't get that morning cortisol. Now, remember, cortisol is a, a release of sugars in your body. It naturally gets you up and going and yeah, yeah. suppresses serotonin. Yeah, like it has its place, right? Yeah. I mean, like suppressing all cortisol is the worst thing. As, as I think we said in the podcast, you die. You, you die. Don't get cortisol. Without cortisol, yeah. you die. So uh, is it a cortisol release issue? It, it is if she's ruled out, uh, he or she, I don't know. Um, if they have ruled out um, no, the- doesn't say. Didn't say. So if they have ruled out those other things like the, the diet and that sort of thing. So if you have a big bowl of sugary cereal and you have a slump about it, yeah, it's that. That's blood but, sugar. Yeah. So so it's probably it's the, the lacking of cortisol, which is a sort of genetic built-in thing. Now, the only way to get around that is to stimulate the body quite Severely, but to this get is the cortisol. Weird. People get caffeine, but she's saying that having a cup of coffee is not really working. No, or no. he. I'm sorry. I'm assuming she. <laughs> I'm assuming she. I don't but know why. Is, I don't know either. Um, he, she, he, she. <laughs> not offensive go. at all. We'll be politically correct. <laughs> yeah. So, so they, they. I mean, maybe they don't identify they, 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 as they. What are we going to do? Oh, we're stuffed. Yeah. Uh, firstly, the cheats way, if you want to cheat way, is have a new tropic um, in the morning. And that's not bad for you. It's got caffeine, but it's got other things to help with brain chemicals. So that's the cheat's way around that. The other way is to stimulate the body dramatically in the morning with high, you get a higher spike of cortisol. So your morning exercise, I, I don't know what it is, but let's, you know, try and do something at higher intensity in the morning and you'll be more alert for the for that morning slump and you get more cortisol release. So you you combat that lacking cortisol. Mm. So that that's what I'd recommend. Is is get that ec- if if the diet thing's ruled out, like if they've checked all the different diet things. Yeah. So some sort of severe exercise in the morning, something short, sharp, and savage in the morning. Okay. Because I mean, again, this is where we 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 used to hear that burst of light and that sort of yeah. get up and it's yeah. just like whoa, you know. Um, 
maybe I don't know. I mean, I'm just thinking of hacks here. I mean, yeah. again, Steve, you ruled these because you're the expert. Yeah. What about an alarm that shocks the living crap out of you, like one that really tees off? Yeah, that that that'll be great at, at six a.m. But 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 if if you do a really high intense exercise, that that will be a similar thing. Mm. Like like go to that morning gym class where you, where you get the, the PT yelling at you. What about things that blunt cortisol, which which naturally sort of stop you from 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 what what about? What, what about removing those handbrakes or things that enhance cortisol production? I know oh, that sounds funny. As opposed to an acute thing, yeah. maybe something that you take that's more systemic. Now, I know that a lot of people were taking certain uh, adrenal products yeah. um, that helped with the regulation of cortisol, improving sensitivity to cortisol. Steve, yeah. could that Absolutely. be beneficial? Absolutely. Any sort of, and any sort of nootropics are really good for that. So panic ginseng is a classic uh, okay. one. Okay. Yep. You know, we, we mentioned it in the last podcast. That's a great thing for that. But also amino acids, acetyl-L-carnitine. Okay. It's very good. And tyrosine to get the thyroid. Because tyrosine is, is a great amino acid because it build, builds adrenaline and dopamine mm. and thyroid hormone. So it's got everything. So, look, thank you for writing in. Mm. Um, if you can let us know um, on our website. So if you could if you could um, contact, jump onto our website yep. and say, hi, Jeff and Steve read out my my um, FAQ, my FAQ yes. on, the, on the podcast. Um, <laughs> we'll send you out something. And, yeah. and, and thank you for both of you for writing in love too. And, look, Please write back to us, especially question two, because yeah. um, we want. I want to know how you go. I, Absolutely. I don't like – it's a scratch that I can't itch, Steve, if I don't know if we've, we've actually been able to help, right? I think I think we will help. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's give that a crack. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks for writing in, and please jump onto – you can also email us if you'd prefer at info at ATP Science and say, hey, I was mm. written, written out, or jump onto the podcast and speak with um, – who's normally on there? Tom. Tom. Yeah. Tom, Aaron, um, Lauren, Tony, any of them. Yeah. But anyway, just say hey and and they'll help you and we'll 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 sort you out. That'd be a good one. Good one. All right.